Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to today's video. We're gonna be covering a whole lot of updates on the Mustang, new wheels, new parts, paint, and so much more things. Let's get into today's video. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna to be talking about a whole lot of suspension, uh, finishing up all the welding, painting the engine bay, and a whole lot of other stuff. Whole lot of Mustang stuff going down right now, guys. Welcome to the channel. Here we have the wheel off, and this is, this is the passenger side suspension. And it looks like it has new shocks, but the rest of it looks like it has seen better days. You got cracks everywhere. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and replace the upper A arms, the lower arms, and all the bushings and the, bo uh, the ball joints and so on and so forth. Things like, uh, definitely has a lot of grease. So it's definitely been worked on here and there you can tell with the new shocks as well. Uh, but since we're gonna go ahead and do the pass the driver side, we might as well do the passenger side. We're also gonna go ahead and slap on a new, new set of uh, disc brake and coilovers. But for right now, just so we can get this thing rolling, we're just gonna go ahead and do the full front end rebuild. Uh, so that way we can start rolling on uh, the driver's side. All right, last time we left off uh, welding in the new apron, mocking up the core support. Right now we have went ahead and prepped out pretty much the old portion of like the firewall, this side of the apron, doing that repair, got a little bit of bondo here, we're gonna go ahead and get that primer, and prepping out the new apron so we can go ahead and shoot this all in a, in a satin black, and I'm also gonna remove this, paint this separately, uh, and after that's done, we're gonna go ahead and install some suspension. What's up guys, Saul here from SOS Customs, we're gonna be working on this Mustang. Um, I'm really excited about this one because I have a Mustang as well, and we're gonna be rebuilding that one as well in another video, but let's get into the suspension here. We got everything tore down as you see. This is a bare apron that we have uh, already replaced. Um, no suspension components are in here as you can see. Here's the old suspension here. Uh, as you guys can see, this is the spindle and the old drum brakes connected to the lower control arm. Um, you have the tie rod ends bolted into the um, idler arms and all the suspension components are the power steering, the pump, uh, the diverter valve for the power steering, uh, the other side of suspension, the sway bar is still kind of connected, there's old spring, lower controller, all that was damaged during the accident. But now that we just did everything um, new on the new apron, we got brand new stuff, voila! As you can see here, these parts are all new quality reproduction parts so you got your upper control arm comes loaded meaning it comes with the ball, uh, upper ball joint and the spindle shaft here that goes in the uh, control arm you got your lower control arm all the bushings are pressed in which is nice you don't have to worry about pressing them in so you got your bushing there you got your new ball joint here um, these are all the sway bar bushing end links that are going to be going into the new suspension also over here is part of the sway bar goes through there holds it in its place we got the uh, new pitman arm as you can see everything's pressed in you don't have to worry about pressing in the old stuff in the olden days you would have to press everything out heat it up press a new piece in here but now with the magic of internet and ordering parts you can get everything all you know brand new so um these are the two uh tie rod ends left and right uh, as well as the inner tie rod ends which are here here are the sleeves that connect pretty much the two components together here um, on this side obviously we got the opposite might as well that we're gonna have all the suspension um, replaced we're gonna go ahead and do both sides it makes sense we're not gonna leave the old damaged stuff and then just do one side so we're gonna swap everything out this is part of of the car that we're still going to be uh, welding onto the apron because this is the connecting part for the uh, tension rod which is the bushings that go from, from the lower control arm that bolts to this component here and there's a rod that goes underneath the vehicle and bolts to here that controls the position of the wheel back and front to the suspension so when it gets aligned um, 
We'll probably lift up the car. You guys can see the old side and then we can compare it to the new side as we're installing. So let's go. All right, guys. So we're on the left, the right side of the vehicle where the suspension didn't really get damaged, but it's complete. So you can see everything is assembled. You got the spring, the shock, the upper control arm, the spindle, the drum brake system here. Uh, that's the tension rod I was talking to you guys about that bolts onto the lower control arm and goes all the way across, which we have to weld the other piece onto the other apron. Um, you got your brake line here. All this in the new unit, uh, I don't know if we're doing this video in the next one, is we're gonna be converting this to a disc brake setup. So all this old drum technology is gonna be gone and we're gonna be updating it with the new disc brake conversion. Um, which is gonna be pretty nice. It's gonna clean up the wheel well. It's gonna break better. It's gonna look nicer But you can see the all the components of how it's supposed to look Obviously, it's gonna look a lot fresher when everything's on there But all this all these new components are a new ball joint the lower perch uh, the spring the shock and we're gonna be doing an upgrade to the suspension as well that is gonna be able to um, uh, lower and, and heighten the suspension um, so that's gonna be a new upgrade that's gonna um, make the ride quality of the car a lot better, but also um, have a lot better drivability from, you know, this being 1966 kind of updates it to a new technology, which is gonna ride a lot better, perform better. And that's what we want on these old cars because the suspension's outdated. So you want something that's without having to modify so much where you have to do a pro touring kit or something like that on a car, you can just go away and put in a new kit that bolts, pretty much bolt on and has new technology, adjustability, dampening, like the new cars where they have dampening control, right, on the uh, right height um, and all that on the new suspension. We're gonna throw this, uh, throw that in into this vehicle, which is gonna be really nice. So we'll start uh, disassembling this side and get the other side assembled. So you guys stay tuned for that. So since everything is ready to get the suspension installed and everything, I really had to make a decision because I really like the clean look of the apron like this. You know, I could have probably just painted a satin black or the color of the car. Uh, but the other side still has all the original tar style undercoating or what have you. And I would really have to peel all this stuff off. And uh, I tried and it's, it's on there really good. So, um, you know, in order to expedite this, you know, I think what we're going to do is just we're going to shoot both sides with a fresh coat of Raptor liner. Uh, and that's going to give us a way better look than what the factory stuff is. And it's also going to protect the inside from rust. Uh, and it's going to be really easy to clean off versus the paint that could get nicked and chipped and stuff like that over the years. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take off the other fender right now. Remove the rest of the suspension and go ahead and shoot both inner aprons with Raptor liner. So while the complete over here is dropping off the rest of the suspension, so we can go ahead and clean up the apron and uh, undercoat the firewall. Uh, we did get a full front end suspension kit, but uh, well, front end rebuild kit for suspension, uh, but we did not get the tension, uh, the torsion rods in that kit. So. These are still in good condition, they're just a little cold. Go ahead and use some of this uh, super clean uh, foam and degreaser to kind of clean these up a little bit, sand them down, and uh, go ahead and give them a fresh coat of uh, satin black. Dude, this stuff like really works. It like took everything off the first time around. Just gonna be a little bit more thorough. Pretty happy with this stuff right here. There's one down and over here, this stuff's ready to just drop out, right? We got the whole lower control arm with the shock and the spring. Uh, let's go ahead and just drop that out. There we go. But right now we have this side empty and this side empty. So we'll go ahead and coat both sides right now. This is a kit of Raptor liner. We use this stuff 
so much at the shop, whether it be a bed liner, whether it be an undercarriage. Here we have our one quart of Raptor liner. You wanna make sure that you shake this thing very well. Who knows this thing has been sitting on the shelf. We're gonna go ahead and mix it up. And looking at my audience is predominantly men. I know you guys I know how to do this at home. So just shake that thing up real good. Once you feel like you have shook it up enough, go ahead and get that, put that down. And here you have your hardener that comes in the kit. All your mixing instructions are gonna be in here. We're gonna go ahead and fill up the eight fluid ounces of hardener, and that's gonna go ahead and go into your cup. Okay, here we have our eight fluid ounces. I'm gonna go ahead and pour it directly into the bottle of Raptor. And that goes in there like so. See, we're gonna go ahead and put that in here and shake it up. Once you had went ahead and mixed this up around enough, you're gonna wanna go ahead and get some protection because this stuff goes into your nose, your nostrils, your pores, stuff like that. You wanna go ahead and be protected. Once you have shaken this thing up enough times, you're gonna go ahead and remove the cap that comes with this. Go ahead and drop it in the box and put your gun directly in here. And you're gonna go ahead and screw that on there very nice and tight to make sure catches properly and you don't want to go ahead and make sure it is nice and tight then from there you're gonna go get ahead and get ready to spray put your mask on safety first now before you go ahead and start spraying i would recommend doing a couple test panels on some cardboard stuff like that just to see how you want your spray pattern to be i've done this a couple times so i know what i'm going to be doing but we're going to go ahead and start spraying this whole side uh, light coats and then we'll go ahead and switch over to the other side. And that's one light coat. Now you guys can make this as thick as you want. Uh, I'm liking how this looks overall. I might put one light coat on top of this, uh, but this is only one quart, guys. So as you guys can see, this stuff goes a long way. Um, so depending on how, how much thickness you want on there and how much you want to spray and you know, depending on the texture and stuff like that, that's going to really determine on how much you're going to use. But for right now, I think we're good for with just one more uh, one more uh, bottle and we should be good to go. All right guys, here's just a quick look at the final product. I think it came out great. Both sides seem to look the same now. This side has a little bit more texture because there was already undercoating on this. This is how their finish was. Ours just kind of went on top of it. Try to clean this up as best as possible. Make it look as nice as possible. Uh, now, I gotta go ahead and start cleaning up the old spindles. So I'm gonna go ahead and start using this uh, super clean foaming degreaser that has been working out great for me. Kinda let that soak while I start cleaning up the rest of my mess. 
put away all my Raptor supplies. Many hours later. All right, we're making leaps and bounds today, guys. Got the upper A arms, lower A arms kind of ready to go on. Shim this side already. This side is already ready to go on. Uh, and some news, uh, we cleaned up this spindle, but the other spindle, which is the driver's side, which was on the accident, we ended up finding out that it was banned, which was no surprise. It was a pretty gnarly accident. Uh, so I ended up getting a brand new one through Scott Drake. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this box compare the two make sure we've got the right part So here we have the tire finally on. No calipers in here, folks. These, uh, this brake kit is way too big for the factory 14-inch uh, wheel. And uh, we are missing a couple more uh, things that we need to go ahead and bolt in our coilovers. So right now we're gonna go with this custom wood suspension here that is gonna get us into the spray booth. Uh, but over here with this uh, Krager that we found here at the shop laying around, we'll be able to roll in car into the spray booth and it's gonna roll under its own power now. Not have to be dragged and pushed, which is a major step. We got G over here, very enthused, sanding the core supports, very enthused here. Look at that. Uh, and uh, this engine bay is gonna go into paint here. Okay, here we are with the 1966 Fastback Mustang. It is in the spray booth, and this thing is ready for some sealer. I'm just gonna uh, continue masking a couple things that we, we don't get any overspray, um, and get ready to shoot some sealer. Now, based off what it looks like with the sealer, we will either shoot it tonight with some black base coat and clear coat with a little bit of the flattening agent. The engine bay now it looks a little bit glossy but the matting agent will take into effect within a couple hours and it's just gonna give us a really nice satin sheen I'm gonna let this go ahead and dry off for a couple hours and then we're gonna go ahead and pull this thing out the next day all right so finally the engine bay got painted I got my rear wheels in and I'm pretty anxious to try these on because to be honest I don't know if they're gonna fit they're uh a little bit of a hot boy for this old of a car, uh, but that's why I'm really anxious to try them on. So you guys are gonna see it here first. Let's go ahead and try these things on. But now I gotta pull off this hubcap, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use a flathead and try to pry this thing off. Oh, she's really easy to go. There she is. Baby 14. We'll take a look at this rear section right now. Right now, it still has the old drums. Uh, we are we do have a rear disc brake for the rear as well. Um, so for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a rust test test fit uh, and see. I'm probably gonna have to roll these fenders, but there's not a lot of room to work with. So I'm really hoping that. I didn't go off the deep end here because I don't really want to modify the body too much uh, to fit a set of wheels. So let's see what these things look like. Eighteen by nine and a half U.A. 
Swiss Mag Rambler with the textured matte gray on the inside with the nice polished lip on the outside. Now let's go ahead and do our first initial test fit. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know guys. And why this does look so badass and I love how it looks it's pretty spicy to be honest. I might have to do a little bit of body work. This might be this might be about an inch too too wide. But I really wanted to get the deep the deep lip on this thing. So I don't know. And I'm literally ah, I ah! Ah! All right. Well, it was fun while it lasted. To be honest, I think I'm pretty much because this wheel is not going to even be able to have a freaking tire mounted without hitting this leaf spring. So I don't know, between a rock and a hard place because I don't know, I think I'm going to have to get a new set of wheels. Hopefully US Mags has my back and they are uh, just up the street from us uh, in Riverside, about an hour away. Uh, so I'm going to have to make a couple phone calls and see what we're going to do, but dude, look how spicy that looks. Look at this. Whew. Deep boys. The next day. No. All right, guys. So today the goal is to finish up the front end. So we got all the rack and pinion that is pretty much all brand new and rebuilt. So all the lines and everything like that. But pretty much everything on the car, guys, has been gone through. I'm waiting for a couple plates to get here so we can go ahead and install our Alden American suspension. Sorry for all the boxes, guys. We've got a lot of parts that we want to go ahead and put on it. And I really want to try to finish everything on the front end. Head and throw in our freshly cleaned up motor. Even went ahead and bought a brand new Edelbrock carburetor to go with the Edelbrock manifold. So this thing's literally going to be pretty much all gone through top to bottom even went ahead and bought a brand new oil pan so this thing's gonna look really good nice guys i'm really excited with how it's coming along uh might even throw this baby in tomorrow so we'll see What's really cool is after cleaning up this AC compressor, uh, I figured out that this is an original part, guys. So this car actually really did come factory AC. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my best to mask this up and all these little fittings and see if we can get a fresh coat of black on this thing, make it look as best as possible. Uh, obviously they have a lot nicer compressors now. They probably a little bit smaller, uh, but this is original. So that's, there's something to be uh, appreciated from that. So I'm gonna go ahead and mask up this uh, original Ford plaque and these lines and get this thing painted. All right, guys, so we're gonna wrap up today's video with this, kind of a brief overview of everything that we've done and everything that still needs to get done to get this thing one step closer. So far, we went ahead and swapped out the door real quick. We got a rough test fit on the 18 by eight in the front, but uh, the suspension is not sitting where it needs to be right now. And it's awfully, awfully close to the wheel. Like, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to put a tire there but it's not really in its right position right now. So we can't really say if this is gonna work or not. We got a lot farther on our 
this brake conversion, we still gotta go ahead and do the rear. So I've got a new sway bar in here. Uh, the new racket pinion has been rebuilt along with all the inner and outer tie rods. All that has been replaced. Got the engine bay painted. Uh, and pretty much all that's left is getting uh, our coilovers on there. We're gonna go ahead and cover that. In the next episode, we're gonna cover our coilover mounting the wheels and tire and maybe getting a little bit more advanced on this portion of the quarter panel repair, replacing this rear body panel, quarter panel, and even getting the motor installed. That's gonna be one of the best moments in this build, hearing this puppy run. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe and notification button so you can get notified on all of our latest video updates. Here we have the motor going in, but you're gonna have to wait till next time to see that. I'm gonna drop our IG links right there. Go ahead and give us a follow, and that's gonna wrap it up for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Here at SOS Custom, we got you covered. Peace.